Hey everybody, what's going on? This is me, Alex, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys a little bit something different. Uh, the basics of Lightroom 5.4 Adobe, or as known as Lightroom CC, that comes in Adobe's Creative Cloud Suite. Now, we're going to go ahead and get started by um, opening it up. So I'm just going to teach you guys the basics and importing an image and basic editing of what you guys would want to do. Now, as you see, there is a new update. Now, if you see, I've already imported some images, in this case, the CR2 raw images from Canon's... Um, uh, camera in this case it's the Canon uh, 5D Mark III with the 50 millimeter f 1.2 L on it um, so we're gonna go into file and this is how you import images you go to file and then you're gonna head over to import photos and videos and you can even do videos however it is not really recommended but I'm just gonna go to the add and you're gonna select the images now I have created a folder here in my pictures image that says raw images and these are all the images that I have imported now, as you see, they are they are grayed out currently because um, I have this all photos thing checked as a law, and because I have already imported them into the project, so I would not have to import them again. But it, well, you just have to select all the images you want, and then click on import here, or just uh, check all and then import, and that will automatically import all the images into your project and uh, Lightroom in the Lightroom Five catalog. So you shouldn't be worried about that. Now, well, once you have done that, you want to go to cancel and or it should automatically take you here. And you, you can use your mouse scroll wheel to browse through the images. And this was just some testing on the complete manual mode. As you see, you might notice through this video that all the images are really, really noisy. I'm just testing. It's one, uh, it's really this lens's new low light performance. But I really want to show you this new trick that was introduced in Lightroom. Uh, about, I think it was Lightroom 4 is when it came out, something around there. Uh, it's really cool. And what it is, I'm just going to find a really good image. So in this case, this image could use some retouching here. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, you're going to first want to go into develop. And that's really how you get started on the uh, on the editing process of, this, of images. Once you go into develop here, it's going to go ahead and give you the develop options or um, little tab here kind of like you would see in Photoshop just a little bit easier to use now you can maybe adjust it here it's definitely not anything like Instagram uh, the new filters although you could add filters in here and it's really not like iOS 7's new photo editing thing it's actually a little bit more complex but it's very easy for anyone to do this on at their home uh, by themselves so the first thing that you are going to want to do here is the basic under the basic tab is you can adjust the temperature which is measured in Kelvin scale and the tint along with the exposure and contrast um, so you can actually adjust the exposure and contrast however this is not a very um, recommended unless you are experted in exposure and contrast but I'm just gonna do this because you can always go back so you just can use this little slider to adjust the exposure of the image and then as along with the contrast so you can change the contrast to the image make it too dark very very light uh, desaturated if you want to using the saturation right over here and make it black and white make it look ugly but I, I really like the desaturated look sort of like that um, that's normal I might add a tiny bit of color here maybe about 10 and then you can here in the middle you have your option to choose the highlights you can bump up the highlights or few and then turn down your shadows or add some shadows I'm just gonna turn them down about minus 14 and bump up your whites but not too much to make that pink shine along with your blacks I want to bump those up a tiny tiny bit I'm gonna put those up to 10 and you get your final image now you can tweak around with this as much as you want uh, it doesn't really matter because of course it is your image um, but this is basically the basic tweaking now to get a little bit more easier you can head down to the tone curve section and you have the option here of adjusting the tone curve kind of like you would do in Adobe Premiere Pro with the RGB curves um, you basically have the option for your darks uh, if you go down your shadows and up to the top uh, sort of here you have your lights along with your highlights so you have four different settings of what you can do here we're gonna go ahead and start with the highlights and this is pretty much the same thing I was telling you about earlier except it's uh, in a uh, curving I don't really want to mess with this and to go back all you do is just hit control Z control Z and that will take you undo the highlight tones 
because uh, I have already adjusted those in the basic but if you're looking sort of like for a quick way this is how you would do it to get that easy way under the HSL color black and white this is where you adjust all the hues uh, so you can change each color one by one however I really never do that um, unless I'm recording in uh, or capturing in a in a black and white tone which would still be really hard to do because you'd have to add a lot of correction but under saturation here's where you have the saturation tab along with luminescence luminescence and all of which was which is all of them really um, put together but you can adjust one by one there you can even turn to black and white color A or HSL uh, it doesn't really matter under color you have the hue saturation luminescence and the color all by one and black and white is just the black and white mix which is what you default get on a default camera setting like the 5D Mark III. We're going to go ahead and get a split toning. Now split toning is really when you have skin tones showing. Uh, however, you can do this on a different image just like I'll show you right over here. You turn down the shadows, but it doesn't really work because it tries to find shadows that you'd have on a different image. So we're just going to go to uh, go back and adjust us to zero because that's what they were. Under detail, you have a few different things. It's pretty much the sharpening amount. Now, if you notice, this image is a little bit um, desharpened or out of focus. And the reason is because this was a manual focus lens. I'm going to go ahead and add a bit of sharpening. So I'm just going to zoom in here and add a bit of sharpening. Not too much because we do not want to overdo it. I might add, and you can even type if you click on the number. I'm just going to add 50 in this case. Oops, my number lock's not on. 50. And if we zoom out of here, we can go there and the radius, which would tell us where the sharpening is, yeah, but that's about 2.4 and the detail. That's a bit um, nice. Put about 68 for now and the masking, change that there. So that's our final product really in the noise reduction. Here it is again. Um, this is where you get rid of the noise. So this really is absolutely amazing. So see all that noise in there. All you do is just bump up the luminescence and that will get rid of the noise. Although it does look a little bit fake, this image now. So I'm gonna change that to actually 50. Cause I still want a little bit of noise in there but not too much. That's how you get rid of noise really, noise reduction. Uh, your detail and your contrast, which really does help bump those up and change them to what you want now here is my favorite part of uh, Lightroom 5.4 or Lightroom 5 or even Lightroom 4 I believe is when this got introduced it's under the lens corrections tab now uh, what you want to do is under basic uh, you have the remove chromatic aberration which is common in zoom lenses uh, you know the cheap ones but if you go to profile uh, and you this is absolutely amazing you go to enable profile corrections it is absolutely amazing. Now, once that happens, you want to go to setup and you want to go to custom, and you're going to select your camera. Now, in this case, it's the Canon um, camera. Now, it doesn't ask you for the specific camera; it just ask you for the lens. Now, we have uh, shot this down by default. It's for me. I don't know why it always selects the 55 to 250 millimeter. In this case, I did not shoot it with this lens today, but we shot with the 50 millimeter f 1.2 L USM. And it's automatically going to do, I, I can't really tell a uh, difference, but here you can. So if you uncheck this, you can sort of tell the edges get a little bit lighter. Um, so you reduce some of the vignetting around the edges, which is helpful because you really do not like vignetting, even though this is shot with the prime lens. Take a quick look at it. There it is again. You can sort of tell if you uncheck, 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 uncheck. There it is again, uh, and that's pretty much how you do that. I, I really do love that. And you can even go save new lens profile defaults. So we're going to save this, and it's automatically got load to 50 millimeter f 1.2L, which is one of my main lenses. If we go into color here, you can remove the chromatic ab aberration. Although it's not really, there isn't really since this is a prime lens, but you can always check that to make sure. And the manual, this is where you turn on all the manual settings, which is not really recommended unless you're an expert which in this case you should you wouldn't be watching this video if you go into effects here you can add the effects which is uh, sort of like filters I guess if you want to call it but here you turn on the filters um, on or off and the cal camera calibration uh, you can turn this if you have a problem with your camera you can always fix it like this so that's very very helpful 
um, if we're gonna go ahead here now and select here so this is shows my history right here so history of all the things all the things you have done with this image is all listed right there now if you tell this a shot with ISO 3200 and a shutter speed of 1600 we're gonna go ahead and uh, click on the original photo now smart previews are much smaller uh, but we're gonna go to build smart preview and it's going to go ahead and click OK and we can go ahead and view the original uh, Image so that that's pretty cool if we go ahead over here and we have a few different things a crop overlay along with the spot removal and uh, The red eye correction now spot removal is really useful on faces But since we're on this there's a tiny spot right there All you do is just click that and it's automatically gonna remove it because it's automatically gonna find a place on the rows here that's going to locate it and you're automatically going to be taken to that site so that it is very very useful I find it very useful in my case and I think everyone should do it if they have a pimple on their nose this is how you get rid of it much better than Photoshop's version of the healing brush for some reason this is much better if we go into the red eye correction that's only if you have of course a person and if you have a red eye um, that's how you would get rid of it uh, you just click on the eye and it finds the eye like if you click on this It's not going to find an eye. It's going to tell you to unable to find red eye and it's going to tell you take you to the um, Unable to find red eye If we go into the mask version here uh, under the graduated filter This is the same thing really of what you saw there just a little bit more complex If you go into the radio radial filter We have more options there such as the exposure contrast and highlights and moving on to the adjustment brush, we have a few more things under there. And that just closes and opens that. Uh, now, the last thing I'm going to show you today is how to, of course, um, go ahead and you're going to go to file and how to export this image because you can't save in this image. You have to go to file and export. And what you're going to do is it's going to tell you it's a little bit complicated to sort of, uh, sort of like Adobe Premiere Pro for a sec. For some reason, they just made this a little bit more complicated than Photoshop. Now what you're going to do is you're going to go to hard drive and you want to make sure you have that set or you can even export it to email or even a CD DVD. I don't even know. I don't think my computer can even burn anymore. Those because they're really old. Um, but if you're going to go to export to a specific folder and what you're going to do, you can even export the same folder as the original photo. But I'm going to go to a specific folder and I'm going to go to into my photos and make a new folder here. So we're just going to go ahead and go into uh, pictures. And we're going to right click here and we're going to go to new folder out of here and we're going to go ahead and name it um, raw image edited and we're going to go ahead and create in that folder now what we're going to do is we're going to go choose the folder make sure you do that you got to go to pictures and raw image edited and select folder then put in subfolder untitled export. We're not going to do that because it's going to create another folder in our folder. Add this to catalog. You can go ahead and do that if you want to. That's the project catalog if you're wondering what I was saying, meaning by that. We have the image correct. File name, rename to file name. Um, I guess file name. Yeah, we can do that. Example or rename to um, custom name. Whatever doesn't really matter but we're just going to go to the sequence untitled one or the file name sequence yes file name sequence start number good lowercase uh, we're gonna go to video here and uh, because we have no video so you can just minimize that image format here we go we can go to the JPEG save it as a JPEG PSD TIFF DNG original we're just gonna go save it as a JPEG because that's what we want to export it to and our quality here uh, for 60 we're gonna put that up to 100 and this is really nice how they did this uh, because you can limit the file size to let's say 200k so if you're uploading to YouTube or something like uh, a thumbnail you can put that to 2 megabytes uh, 2000k because that's what they measure in um, and, and that's really nice because it, it automatically corrects the settings to max out but do not go over to 2k so that's absolutely amazing if you go into color space here uh, it's sRGB is default of what all monitors read unless you're in 4k um, Default you can resize the image to what pixels you want and add a resolution of how many pixels per inches or pixels per centimeter You can go to sharpen uh, the sharpen for screen and let, that's only really for printing because it asks you for glossy paper or my 
you can go to watermark and import your watermark if you want to uh, I'm not gonna do that this time because I'm not uploading to anything uh, after export you can do nothing or we can go ahead and show and explore now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the add a preset and what we're gonna do is we're gonna name this preset default um, we're gonna name this default export and we're gonna click on user presets and click on create and that's gonna be right under our user presets and that's how you install a preset or create a preset so you don't have to select all these settings every single time you want to ex export an image once you have done you want to click on export it's gonna go ahead and write to your SD uh, or your hard drive and it's gonna tell you a little bar here and it's gonna bring up the image now the original image was 15 something megabytes because it was raw and over here the uh, final image is 5.30 megabytes size on disk 5.31 uh, and that's how you open it up here uh, we're gonna go ahead and open with and make sure this opens with the Windows Photo Viewer and there it is our image a beautiful raw now JPEG image so that's how you export images and get started with uh, Adobe Lightroom 5 if you guys enjoyed this video please make sure to give it a thumbs up subscribe to my YouTube channel if you guys already have not done that to stay tuned to the latest and greatest tech here on HD Alex films I will be bringing you guys some more videos on how to install uh, stuff and more of these uh, tutorial videos so you guys know a little bit more every single day if you guys enjoyed this video please make sure to go subscribe because that does help you and help me at all times bye guys until next time peace